Hey guys, welcome back. We're looking at the second section of the chess tutorial today, so that's going to be about doing some special move. We are laying down quite a lot of groundwork to make sure we process our special move properly, that we um, modify our list of available moves if those are available, and finally to make sure everything works and we have everything well, well made for the future, we are going to start working on the en passant, which is when a little pawn like this can actually eat somebody in diagonal that passes next to it. Actually, I think that's where the word comes from, it's French, right? So when you pass next to it, for example, here I can move this pawn, passing next to this piece with my first initial jump move, you can eat that piece and this one is defeated. So that's what we're working on today and it works on both sides. And with that in mind, let's get started. Today we're going to be looking at implementing two concepts. The first one is a special move. Um, it's going to be the en passant. And the second concept we'll be implementing is a list of moves that we'll keep track in the future. A um, couple of reasons behind this. First, it's going to be useful for us later on during the simulation. And it's also going to be useful for us to detect if we're able to do certain moves. For example, for castling, um, when you swap your rook with the king, both of them need to never have moved in the past. So we have to go through the list of moves, check have they moved in the past. If so, then we can't allow that move. So we will need that concept in that one point. And that's what we'll start with today. So opening up my chessboard, I'm going to go at the very top here somewhere during my logic. And I'll create myself a new list of vector to int array so it's not just a list of vector to int it's like list of vector to int array because for every single um, object in that list we're going to have the starting move and also the end move the the starting position and the end position and i'll call that the move list which will instantiate right there right next to it there's going to be another concept that we're going to declare today um, here on the spot and that's the concept of special move now, I want to keep a enum for that, so enumeration for that. So I'll go at the very top, I'll create myself a new public enum, call it special move, and inside of here we'll enumerate those moves. So first up is none, so no move whatsoever. The second one is going to be, let's do it in the order that will make them. So en passant, followed by castling, followed by promotion. So I'm going to go ahead and declare myself a private special move and I'll just call it special move like that. With these new field and this new enum, we can now start implementing, um, I'm going to start implementing the move list first. Now with this new value in mind, the move list value, I, we have to do a couple of things, right? So we, de we declare a brand new move list um, array that we'll need in the future, but in case we reset the game and every time now that we add the value that that is gonna persist through time like this one. Um, it might be a good idea to check if we need to reset it on a new game. So I'm gonna take this real quick and I'm gonna go inside the reset function. How did I call this one? Uh, boop, boop, boop. The reset function on reset button right here. And I'm gonna go where the field resets are and I'm gonna say the following. Move list dot clear. <laughs> I don't need to do anything here, uh, anything else here. And actually since this one here is also a list, let me, let me just do a a clear. I'd rather do that than um, just creating a new list. I think it's a little bit less expensive at least. Now this move list, in order to use it, well, we first need to populate it, right? So we have to implement all the moves that we actually do, all the moves that are valid, we need to add them to a certain list. So that's what I'll do by going under my move to, I believe. So where is the move to? So here, if I release the mouse button and it's a valid move, we go inside of move to, right? So instead of, uh, not instead, but inside of the move to, when we can confirm that the move is valid, so right here, we confirm for sure, I'm gonna say move list dot add, and now we need a new list of uh, vector two int. So let's go ahead and create, not list, sorry, a new array of vector two int, like so. And inside of this array, I'm actually going to declare it right there on the spot. So it's going to be the previous position and the new position. How do we call our new position? Sorry about that. I'm, uh, I'm refreshing myself as we go through this. So our new position 
was just a new vector 2 int. Hmm, this one is funny, it should be a vector 2 int. It's a new vector 2 int. And that's it, yeah, so that's all we need here. Um, let's do a new vector 2 int with the following, so x and y. Good. Now we have a new move inside of the move, of the move list, and this one will just um, accumulate all the move that we do. A little bit later on in the future, we will also create a chess notation. So when we move something, we're going to create a... Um, we're going to display something in the UI that just says, hey, that was the move. Just like they do in real chess, they write it down on a piece of paper. Here, we're going to write it down on a piece of UI. All right. So we have what we need for the move list. We can now start laying down some code that's going to be used for every single one of these special moves. And now I'm looking at inside of our function over here that's under the update and that's where we are releasing the mouse button so what we do is we get a list of available move somewhere here right uh, actually i like it somewhere here here we get a list of available move and that's actually when we press down on the mouse on top of getting a list of available move I would also like to get a list of special moves, so get a list of special moves as well. And here, I'm actually going to do the following. So I'm going to say special move, which is the um, our, our enum over here. It's going to be equal to currently dragging. And then we'll do a new function called get special moves. And check this out. We're going to be sending in the board as we do, so chess pieces. We're going to be sending in the move list. That's where it gets quite important. And not only that, but we're also going to send in the available move as a reference. All of this is very important that they are all reference. This first one, because it's, it's too expensive to just create a new board and copy it. So here it's a good way to, to make sure it doesn't uh, cost too much. The move list is good. Same, same idea. So we need to have a, an idea of what was done prior on this board. So also reference. And finally here, the reference available move. And this one is a good reason, to, the good reason we have it under uh, reference is because we have to modify it actually. So in case there is a special move available, we're going to be adding it to the same array as we had prior. Why? Because the highlight tiles and the whole logic behind the game is actually bond uh, to, this, to this value over here, to this variable. So it's going to be very important we modify this one. Now, obviously, we don't have a function called get special move. So I'm going to go under my chess pieces. And here we have the get available move. We are now going to do a public virtual um, special move. That's what we return. And we'll do get special move. This one takes in parameter a chess piece two dimensional array called board. A reference, which, which one was that? The move list, actually. So that's a list of vector to int array called move list and finally we have the available move which i believe was just a list of vector to int so reference list of vector to int like so right and in terms of the um this value here which is going to do return special move dot none so for every single piece we're going to be returning no special move unless it's different pieces that we actually need to move. So in, unless it's a pawn, in that case, we can be checking for a passa. unless it's a rook, um, actually not the rook, it's a king. If it's a king, then we can be checking for castling. And finally, if it is a, a pawn again, then we can be checking for promotion. Okay, so I am on top of my pawn right now. Um, before I go any further and I start declaring the get available move for the pawn, I'm going to go back to my chessboard, and that's going to be very important. So here, this line and the logic we're going to be creating in the future is going to take care of adding stuff to, to the available move. And then we can move and do, you know, do what we have to do, right? But in case of the, um, of the en passant move, we have one problem here. And that problem is, I'm just going to pick up any picture here. The problem is, if we have a look at this picture, the move happens when you jump with the starting position here, you jump by two and there's a pawn right there. Now, this pawn can actually move in diagonal 
and as he moves in diagonal, he actually kills the white piece over here. And our problem is the fact that if we go from this tile to that tile, in our logic currently, this piece, it does not disappear. It doesn't get killed because we're not overwriting the same spot, right? We're going here and by doing that, this piece in our logic should remain over there. So what needs to happen is we actually need to do something else. We need to do a post special move. So this is what happened when you pick up the piece. You see that the move is available. You can do it. And after you move it, if you actually moved, you know, if you actually did the special move, then we should be going back and removing the other piece. So it's something that should happen after the special move has been done. And I'd like to check for that inside of the move to function when our move is valid, of course. So I'm going to go back to my move to function under operation here. And once we, we got things uh, done, so over here we have the position single piece, we have the move list.add, we have all of that. What I'd like to do after we added the move list is do the following process special move. And it's going to be a function that would just go back in the move list and check. Did we do something special? If so, do we need to process something? Do we need to check for uh, additional kill or something of the sort? Okay. Now this function will be created under, do we have a section for special move? We are, we don't have one yet, but let's create one. Special moves. And I'll lay down the process special move and in here, um, I'm actually going to do the following. So I'm just going to lay down some code for the moment. And we're going to say if special move equal equal special move dot en passant, then do something. But we just don't know what yet. We just know that this is where it's going to happen. All right, good. So I think we kind of know where we're going um, after this. Every time we have a special move, we are going to first have to code the possibility inside of the piece. So for example, here, we need to override get special move. And then once it's done, once the special move has done, you have to go back in this function here and process something for the specific type of that special move, whether it's en passant, castling, or promotion, because all of these have different interaction with other pieces of the board. Um, so en passant removes one, the castling moves two pieces at once, which is something we don't currently support. And it's um, promotion actually changes a piece. So, all right, I think we're ready to get started with the pawn. So now let's begin writing down the code for the get special move and we'll do so under the pawn. And I'm going to go over here, do a override of get special move. We receive all these nice parameter here and they're properly named because of the, um, the override, how we name the override. Now, what we're going to do is every time we do one of these, we're going to do return special move dot none. But above that, we'll give ourselves a chance to return something else if that is a possible thing. Now, what I'm going to do is first um, write down en passant. And what we're going to be checking first is, was there a move already done, right? So if it's the very first move of the game, technically it can't happen. So. Um, and also it's going to crash our code if we don't do that. So let's make sure that there is already one move done. And if that's the case, then let's have a look. What was that move? So last move is going to be equal to the move list at move list dot count minus one. That's going to give us the last move done inside of the array. And that is a type of, uh, it's actually a list of vector two int. I'm just going to leave it on bar or wait, can I? use the explicit type. Here it is. Okay. So with that last move, what I'm going to be checking is check if that last move was actually a pawn. So if board at the index last move one dot X, and I'll come back to that to explain everything. Um, last move one dot Y is equal actually dot type is equal equal to a pawn. So what we're doing right here is we're grabbing the second part. So the one uh, second part of last move, because last, last move is actually composed of two things, right? Of the starting position and the end position. What I'm doing is I'm grabbing the last move and I'm saying, Hey, the, the, um, the ending position where the piece is now at, and I'm going to fetch that piece directly on the board 
if that piece that we just moved last round is actually a pawn, then it gives us a chance to actually do en passant. Uh, do note here that you have to do this move immediately after the other pawn has moved. You cannot wait a turn in between because somehow you could... I'm not exactly sure the rules, but I read that and you can't do it because it creates a weird condition in which you can have a piece in between or something like that. Um, not an expert, but I do know that the rule says that you have to do it right after. So if our last move was the other team moving its pawn, then sure. Now we have to check uh, the last move that, that has been done. Is it actually a, a two up move? So did it go up by two tiles or down by two tiles if it's actually a the, the black team in this case? So to do that check, I'm actually going to compare the last move again. So if that last move, if the difference in Y in between the two last move is of two, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, and go one step further. So if last move at the starting position dot Y minus the last move at the starting position, actually at the ending position dot Y, is that equal to two? And that's not going to work if it's one team or the other. I'm not quite sure why, but... Um, it's not going to work, I'm not quite sure which, sorry, uh, because, for example, if we're the black team and we go down, then this would be equal to minus 2 instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this up inside of, of a mathf.absolute. So if that value is negative, then if it's negative, it's going to be swapped to positive. And this way we can now check, is the difference in between these two equal to two tiles? Okay, so we're one move further. So I'm just gonna write down a couple of things right next to this thing. If the last piece was a pawn, if the last move was plus two in either direction, and then we have to check, was that from the other team? Which is something that technically we wouldn't have to check, but um, yeah, we wouldn't have to check this one for the sole purpose that we have turn base, so of course the last move is, is from the other team, but if we end up testing, I'm just going to be adding this condition right here. So if the board at the last move, um, well, the ending position over here, right, if their team is not equal to my team, then we can go one step further. So we're getting quite deep, but uh, I mean, that's, that's what a special move is. It's very, very, very specific. And now what I'm going to say is if the last move at the index 1.y, so if the landing position dot y is equal equal to the same position as me, which means um, the, the pawn either landed to my left or to my right, and I'm the pawn as well, right? So I'm the, for example, I'm the white team pawn and the black just done a move. Did he land exactly to my left or to my right? If that's the case, then we are going to be checking for the two others. So if both pawn are on the same Y. Then we're going to go ahead and check if our last move at the index X is equal to current X minus one, which means he landed to my left. And let's also do the opposite over here. Plus one instead, then he would have landed to my right. All right, if that happens, then we need to add it to the list. And now do remember that we have the list of available move. So available move, and we're not inside of the of the chessboard class, which means we're using this value over here, but it's a reference value. So we're modifying the one from chessboard. We can say dot add a new vector to int with current x minus one, and then current y plus the direction because we're going in um, we're going in diagonal here and I just realized we don't have anything for the direction so let's go ahead and, and drop a line like we've done earlier say int direction is equal to team at the index 0 ternary operator minus actually 1 and then minus 1 there we go and just like that we now covered our left side and this is now the right side one thing important we have to do is we have to return the special move here. So it's going to be a en passant, just like this. All right, it's time for us to give this a try. We didn't code the second part of it, but uh, well, I mean, what happens after 
but let's give this a try just to see if we actually have the option to do so. So I'm going to move this pawn up. Um, I'm going to move whatever here, one more, and then this is where it happens. So either one of these have to jump by two so it can land on the same axis as this one. And then I should have the option to eat it by going in diagonal. And that's the move. Now, obviously, we need to remove this pawn afterward because it can still move and that's a problem. But it worked on this axis. I should have tried the other axis as well. So let's do that. So I have it working this way. On the next turn, I should not be able... Yep, so we passed one turn and now I can't do it anymore. Let's do the right side. And the right side is also available. Good. So we know that we can position our piece uh, accordingly. Now the next step is going to be to actually um, do something afterward, right? So going back under my chessboard, we're going to go to the function that is called process special move. And within here, I'm going to define a couple of things. The first one being um, we're going to be keeping track of the last two moves. So First is the new move. The new move is going to be equal to the move list at the index move list dot count minus one. Now that should be uh, our new our new move that we've done. So that's our piece going and doing the special move. But we're also going to keep track of the other one. So the target move, the target position, or you let's call it the target pawn position, just so we can be completely explicit here. Um, boop, boop, boop. And that would be at minus two. So it's one move before us, right? And what would happen here is we also need to get a reference of that chess piece. So chess piece, enemy pawn. And to do so, I'll grab it um, exactly the same way as we grabbed it earlier. So I'm going to call the chess piece array. And I'm going to say it's going to be at the target pawn position index one dot x and also target pawn position, index one dot y. This way we can grab it at the landing position where it is right now. Now, the reason we're gonna need the new move is to make sure we actually did the en passant. And to do so, um, a couple of things we could do, right? We could start by, well, technically the only thing we would need to do here is check, are we above the enemy pawn? And just like that, I think we should be able to, um, to check if it's a en passant actually. So here, that's my pawn. And we're going to grab it at the new move position. Yep, just like that. So that's our pawn. That's the enemy pawn. We just have to check if this one is one above or one below the enemy pawn. So the one that moved prior. And to do so, let's do my pawn dot current y. Actually, current x is going to be equal to enemy pawn dot current x. They have to be on the same x now, uh, simply because we jumped over it. So that's going to be the first condition. And the second condition, hmm, I actually wonder if this is enough. No, this would not be enough because, um, here, this would not be enough because we might be able to eat another pawn in another piece in diagonal and somehow it would mess things up. But we can't jump over another piece with the, the initial pawn move. Hmm. Okay, so I believe this actually might be enough. Um, in case it's not, we can always add another condition such as the current y has to be minus one, the enemy pawn or something like that. And just to, to make sure, I'll, I'll do it here, right? In case we run into any issue. So my current y as my pawn has to be enemy pawn current y minus one or same thing but plus one, depending on which direction we're going, right? Okay. This is just to be safe, really. Okay. Um, next up, we are going to check which team it's on because we have to defeat that piece. So if the enemy pawn dot team is equal equal to zero, then we're defeating someone from the white team and therefore we add it to the list. So add the enemy pawn. And then uh, just like we've done earlier when something died, uh, let's do where did we do that actually? We did that in the move too. So roughly around here, I'm just going to add all of that here. I'm just going to copy this actually. So dead white dot add, there it is. My reference is like that. And we should now be good to go. Um, same thing here, of course, 
for the L statement, but this time around in the black team. And me, and me pawn stays the same. Here we have to make sure we change all the values. So do we have anything else to change? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. And then one more step that we have to do in case we went through all of this. So it's valid en passant move. After that, we have to, of course, make sure we delete the chess piece reference. So let's do enemy pawn dot uh, current x, oh, current x and enemy pawn dot current y is going to be equal to null. This way we can make sure to reset this thing. Um, should we be ready to go now? So with the, the special uh, process special move is actually being called in the move to and therefore I think we have all we need to give this a try. So let's go a little bit further here, go here, move in diagonal, this one is gone, that's pretty good. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side, so roughly around here, also gone. I'm going to do one test where I just go forward. It's not deleting that piece. That's perfect. That's the, the, the uh, intended behavior. It's also what I was fearing uh, might be a bug in the future, but I'm glad it wasn't. Let's do... Hmm, let's do something like that here. Just walking next to it should not trigger en passant. Yep, exactly. This one should. And it's looking pretty good thus far, yeah, no, it's, it's looking like it's working quite good. Alright, so it seems like we have our first special move coded, and with that special move coded, it's going to wrap up the first episode of the second section. I hope you guys enjoy, we made some, um, some good work in terms of setting up the whole flow we're going to be using for special move. In the next episode is going to be much more complex though because we're going to be tackling castling and castling is, is a little bit more complex <laughs> because we're moving two of the same piece on the board. So that's what we'll be doing and I'll see you there. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed and share this with your friend as we are going to keep on pushing towards our goal to hit 10,000 subscribers this year and with that will come the multiplayer version of this chess tutorial which I'm currently working on. So looking forward to that guys. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.